when it comes to letting around, using the marker flow, or any bait application using the spod or spom, I generally just use one rod. So in this AD Quick Bite, I'm gonna run through everything from start to finish, how you set this up. That goes from loading the reel with braid to your shock lead, all knots, including the loops where you can loop on your leads, your floats, and your spoms. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to start with the butt section of your rod only with your reel on. And now you wanna get your braid. So this does need to be a dedicated spod or marker braid because these float, and as I say, it has to be braid because it's got zero stretch and you can feel everything going on when you're markering up your swim. So once you've done that, get the end of your braid and pass it through your butt eye of your rod. This is where you need to attach it to the reel. So there's a couple of really important things here. If you've got, say, a really deep spool on your reel. You're gonna to wanna to have to back it up because you get generally 250, 300 meters of spod marker braid when you buy it. And if it's not at the right distance near the lip of the spool, it's not gonna perform that well. So you might need to back it up if you've got a deep spool. If you haven't, like this reel here, it's a dedicated spod reel. It's got quite a shallow spool. It's designed exactly to put on about 300 meters of dedicated spod braid. So how I do it, and not everyone's gonna do this the same way, you can tie knots to get it onto the spool, but I find that with braid, it does slip on the metal spool. So how I do it is I sellotape it on, make sure that it's on real tight and doesn't pull loose. Once you've attached that braid to the spool, it's a case of now dropping the rest of that braid into a bucket of water. I use water just because it keeps everything lubricated when you're putting the braid onto the reel. So you start winding the braid onto the reel, but remember to keep tension using your finger and thumb while putting the braid on. So you wanna get that braid so it's just underneath the lip of the spool here. It's different to your fishing rods, you'd probably fill it a little bit more, but with braid being braid, suffers from a lot of wind knots, a lot of braid carnage, you wanna underfill it, trust me, serious edge. Once you're happy at where that is, we'll get the shock leader and we'll attach it to your braid. The reasons we use a shock leader on a marker and spod setup, quite simple really. The braid we're using here is really, really fine. And doing those big long chucks, you can actually cut your finger if you don't use a finger still. And also you can have a crack off and you don't wanna be leaving lots of braid, spoms and that in the lake. So how I do it is I get the tip section of the rod and I attach it back on the butt section. And I get this braid and I pass it through all the rings. Now it's time to tie a knot. So the knot I use, there's plenty of different knots, but the knots I use is a five turn back to back grinner knot. It's quite simple. You lay both parts of the braid side by side, and then you get the shock leader and create a loop. Now you wanna pass that tag end through that loop five times. Slowly pull it down, bed it down, but don't pull it tight. And then you want to get the braid section, the actual marker braid, and you want to create another loop, the same as you did with the shock leader, and pass that tag end back through five times, exactly the same, and pull it down. Yet again, don't bed it down too tight. Now, pull both knots slowly down so they meet. And then this is where you wanna then give it a really good tug down and bed those knots together. Then you wanna just trim off the tag ends and you're ready to go. Once you're happy with that knot, it's the case of putting the right amount of shock leader onto your reel. So I would probably say about five or six turns of shock leader onto your spool is bang on. After that, I would pull your shock leader down to about equal to your spigot. I then pull another three foot off and chop it there. This is quite important because it allows you to tie that big loop on the end so you can change between leads, spoms, etc. And it's quite simple. All you gotta do is bring the tag end back round on itself, leaving a loop of about 18 inches. After that, I tie a figure of eight loop knot and trim the tag end. I then pull that loop down and I tie another figure of eight loop knot right on the end, leaving this tiny little tag. So 
So this tag is really important because you can pass it through, let's say for instance, a marker lead, pull the loop over the lead, pull it down so the lead is nice and secure on the rod. So now you can go into your swim, lead around, find the spot you're happy with, and then it's a case of just pulling that little tag, looping off your lead. You can then put on, you say, your marker float or your SPOM in the same way as you put your lead on. So there we go. That is how I set up my marker stroke spod setup. So I only have to take one rod to do all three applications. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so you don't miss any more content like this. And until the next time, catch you later.